Hello, today is a video about the new Vodafone Wi-Fi hub as sent out by Vodafone uh, early May 2020. And it's a fairly strange industrial kind of design router. On the top of the router at the top right facing upwards is the Wi-Fi button which turns Wi-Fi on and off and then to the right of that is the WPS button to push button configure devices to connect to the Wi-Fi. The back of the router on the far left, the red port is the DSL or VDSL port. Next to it are two VoIP ports, which I am not sure are currently used. Then there is a USB port. Then there are four gigabit Ethernet ports, which are yellow. And then an Ethernet WAN port, which is blue, which will probably be used with uh, a BT fiber to the premises service or possibly a very old uh, fibre to the cabinet install with an open reach modem. Then you've got the power socket, an on off physical button, and to the right of that a factory reset button. On the left side of the router, as you look at it from the front, at the back of the router is a plastic cover. If you remove the plastic cover, it reveals a USB port as well as the other USB port which is on the back. Presumably this could be used for a slide-in or a click-in mobile dongle or something very similar like that uh, where they want it to be a kind of flush design that they just post out to customers and it, and it doesn't look uh, like you can s snap the dongle off if it was sticking out of the back of the router or, or something similar like that. And on the underside of the router is the label, which has all of the connectivity details. So the Wi-Fi name, the Wi-Fi password, the login details to the router and the model number of the router. The model number of this router is THG3000. So that's THG3000. And it takes a 12 volt power supply at 2.5 amps. So moving on to the web interface, which is at 192.168.1.1, with the admin password being on the underside of the router on the label. Once you've logged in, you get to basic mode by default. On the overview screen, it shows you what speed you're connected at, the number of devices that are connected and how they are connected. In basic mode, if we go to Wi-Fi, you can easily turn the Wi-Fi network on and off and set the names and passwords of the two Wi-Fi networks that you are allowed to have. Changing into expert mode, doesn't really give you a huge amount more in the Wi-Fi section, except on the left where you get an extra load of menus to do with Mac filtering and uh, channel analyzing uh, and client monitoring. If you go to the schedule option on the left side, you can select when to allow Wi-Fi to be used. Go to the WPS option and you can start the pairing from the web interface itself so you don't have to walk over to the router to press the WPS button. And under Wi-Fi settings you can set the channel width for the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz. You can enable Mac filtering which is a really not a great way of uh, limiting stuff connecting to your Wi-Fi because it's been fairly easy to spoof Mac addresses and also sniff Mac addresses uh, but if you did want to do that then under Wi-Fi in the expert settings Mac filter on the left side. Then you have channel analyzer, which is quite a good function to have built into a router. It shows you where the Wi-Fi networks are in your local area. For example, in this setup, all of the Wi-Fi networks are on channel one and channel six. Wi-Fi spills over a couple of channels either side. And uh, if you were to put your network on one through to channel eight, you will have some sort of contention or uh, congestion or collision with other networks. So this graph here shows that putting your own Wi-Fi network onto channel 11 is probably the most sensible option here. And you can do the same for the five gigahertz. You can have a look at the band plan and what's being used where. Client monitoring tab lets you have a look at what Wi-Fi devices are doing on the network. So how they're connected, the speeds, the link rate, data rate, how long they've been connected, and signal strength, which is, again, quite an advanced feature for uh, a residential router. 
Going up to the internet tab, you can enable WAN ping, which I really wish BT would allow on their BT hubs. This one looks super easy. It's disabled by default, which is fine. And if you did want to enable it, you can just do the sl uh, slider and then click on the apply button. You can do port forwarding, which they call IPv4 port mapping. There are some IPv6 settings. In this instance, Vodafone didn't seem to have active IPv6 coming down the line, so I couldn't test or play about with those options. You can do DMZ for port forwarding every single port through to one of your network devices. And you can set some DNS servers manually and do dynamic DNS. The range of dynamic DNS providers it supports is pretty good. So uh, no-IP is one of the free providers and it's nice to see that that's supported. Under mobile data, 3G, 4G, presumably, is for the dongle which you can plug into the uh, section on the left side of the router uh, behind the plastic cover. Going over to the sharing options, where if you plug a USB device into the back of the router, uh, or possibly, again, the port on the side of the router, so if you plug in a printer or a hard drive, uh, it will allow you to share that using the router. Into the settings tab along the top, you've got a firmware update option, which in my instance, when I clicked on check for update, seemed to sit there for many minutes and didn't do anything. In the end, I had to reload the page. Going to LED settings, it's quite nice to see that you can switch off the LEDs in case you're using the router in a room where you were sleeping or somebody was light sensitive and uh, the blinking lights were frustrating. Configuration, you can save the configuration to your computer and then restore it at a later date if you needed to. You can also factory reset the router from this screen and do a standard reboot of the router. Public subnets is if you've got probably a business service with multiple static IP addresses. This service didn't have it, so I couldn't test this option. Going into the local network option, you can change the IP address range of your LAN and also the uh, second Wi-Fi point and set static DHCP assignments. So if you wanted one computer to always get, or a printer, for example, to always get the same IP address. Mac filter in this section will do Mac address filtering across uh, Ethernet and Wi-Fi rather than the uh, wireless section or Wi-Fi section only doing uh, the Wi-Fi devices. Under status and support gives a lot of detail and what's really nice to see on this screen is Ethernet port status. So uh, if there aren't lights on the back of the router, which there aren't, and you wanted to know what speed one of your devices was connected at, if it was plugged in, uh, it would say there whether it's connected at 100 megabit or gigabit, uh, which is very useful to know. Then we go on to the Wi-Fi status. And then on to system, which says how much CPU usage, memory usage, driver versions, and firmware versions. On the left, go to DSL status. And again, for a home router, it gives you a lot of information about the uh, DSL or VDSL connection. Over to the fibre status and gives absolutely nothing because uh, this is not a full fibre to the premises installation. And mobile status, again, there wasn't a mobile dongle plugged into this, so I couldn't uh, see any status on that either. NAT mapping tables, quite good for seeing how heavily used your devices are or uh, how heavily each device is using the internet under the diagnostic utility tab. Basic testing, such as ping and trace route. Event logs gives some very basic information about what is going on in the router. The reconnect option allows you to resync the DSL connection or reconnect the FTTP connection. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. 
If it was, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help.